Hello, welcome to Salt and Light Canning. I'm Jessica. This is my kitchen. Today, I am making jam. Um, in the next few weeks, we're going to be starting seedlings for the garden. And I know it doesn't look like it because it's cold and it's snowing and all of those things. But in the next couple weeks, we're going to be starting seedlings for the garden. And so I need to work on cleaning out the freezer for when harvest comes in. So today I'm making cherry jam. It's really easy to do. I had some bags of frozen cherries. So I thawed them, well mostly thawed them, and now I'm going to just make them into jam. You can make jam from any kind of fruit or frozen fruit that you have. Um, kind of any, anything you want to do. Get these in my pot. What is your favorite kind of jam? Let me know in the comments what you like, what your family eats. I get my pot here turned on, start it heating up because I need my fruit to heat up and begin to boil for at least a minute before I add my pectin. And with jam, it does go really, really fast. So you have to be patient if you want it to set. I have my cherries in the pot here and I'm just going to let them heat up. Um, and then we will add our pectin. So like I said, the fruit has to heat up and be boiling for one minute before I add my pectin. I buy my pectin in bulk and I get it off of Amazon. So this is the pectin that I use. And I've used it for years and years and years and always like the results. Um, use whatever pectin you use that you like. Uh, lots of people do like the ball pectin, it's easy to find. It's in the canning section at most stores. All right, I'm gonna immerse and blend my fruit here a little bit. I don't want like whole cherries in my jam, but, so we'll just blend it a little bit. Now you don't have to immerse and blend your fruit. You could just leave it whole if you want to. It's your jam. You get to make it how you want. I think that's about good. I still have some chunks, but it's not super chunky. Now my jam has been boiling heavily at a rolling boil for a while. This is just my fruit. So now I'm going to add my lemon juice, a little bit of almond extract, because I think that goes really well with cherries. I'm going to add my pectin. Now with your pectin you're going to have to bring it back to a boil that you can't stir down for at least a minute before we add our sugar. I also highly encourage you <laughs> Please, please, please read your pectin because your amounts of sugar or lemon juice or fruit might be different depending on your pectin. Um, I do one part fruit to, well, it's one cup fruit to two cups sugar one tablespoon of uh, lemon juice for each cup of fruit, and then 
one tablespoon of pectin for each cup of fruit. But read your pectin, because like I said, yours might be different than mine. So just keep stirring, be patient. Again, jam doesn't take very long, but it does take your attention. I would consider this a rolling boil that I can't stir down because even though I'm stirring it, um, it keeps boiling. So now I'm gonna watch my kitchen clock right here for at least a minute. And because I have so much fruit, I'll probably go two, maybe even three minutes. All right, we've been boiling for a couple of minutes. So now, I'm going to add my sugar. Now I've said many, many times, but with jam, it is very important to add your sugar all at once. So we're going to stir that in, and we'll bring it back to a boil that I can't stir down. Now, I have found with well, jams that are like berry type jams that I get a lot of foam. So there's a couple ways you can deal with that. Number one, you can skim the foam off of your jam. Um, if that's what you wanna do. I don't do that because I find I end up wasting a lot of jam by skimming the foam off the top. Number two, you can decide that it doesn't bother you that you have foam in your jam because truthfully all that it really does is it just kind of doesn't look very pretty in the jar. Or number three, you can do what I do and that is to add about a tablespoon of butter to your jam. So a little bit of butter in my jam deals with all of that foam. Just keep stirring. Do not under any circumstances walk away from your jam. Now we're not there yet, but I can tell already by the way this is coating my spoon and the way it drips into the pot that this is going to set really, really well. And that is just something that you learn over time making jam. But truthfully, the worst that could happen with a runny jam is you end up using it for pancakes or something. It's not a loss, okay? Don't be bummed out. It's all good. And just be patient. You really do need to wait for that rolling boil. I'm boiling again. And I can't stir it down. So now I'm gonna watch my kitchen clock for one minute. I'm going to check my set. And the way that I do that is I have a couple frozen spoons in my freezer. I'm just gonna dip them in and see how our jam's gonna set. Now this is very, very hot jam, but you see how this is coating my spoon? That means I'm gonna have a very good set. See how slow it is to drip, even though it is like fiery lava hot. This is gonna set really, really well. Okay. Mm. And it tastes wonderful. I am very satisfied with the way this jam is gonna set. So, I'm gonna get set up on my other counter to put this in jars. So I'll be back in just one minute. Have my jars here, have my jam. We'll get them all filled up. So pretty. All right, we're gonna fill. Well, so you attempt to fill to a quarter inch of headspace. Um, I think I do pretty good if I get it between half an inch and a quarter inch. Just do your best. I mean, headspace is important, but all you can do is the best you can do. 
All right. Since I do have some chunks of fruit, I'm going to debubble. You probably don't have to, but I do. And I'm going to wipe the rim of my jar, clean the rim of my jar with a little bit of vinegar, because that's what I always use. Yes, RG has discovered she has a tail. <laughs> Put my lid on, put a ring on. This is very, 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 very hot. It's like I said, it's like lava hot. So, 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 so pretty and hot. All right, I know this is my pressure canner but I'm not pressure canning, I'm water bath canning. Um, I use my pressure canner to water bath can all the time. Number one, I can double stack jelly jars, so it makes our processing a lot faster. And number two, truthfully, you only need one canner. <laughs> so if you're gonna buy one, buy a pressure canner. So I don't have I'm not gonna pressurize this. I'm not gonna, um, I don't even have my gauge in. I'm just setting my lid on top. My flame is on and we are going to bring this to a boil. <coughs> We're gonna process at a boil for 15 minutes. When I come back, when we're taking them out of the canner. So my timer finished and I took the lid off. It's been a couple minutes and I'm gonna take them out. Try not to tip your jars just because everything's expanded from the heat and if you tip your jars there's a chance that it won't seal. But if jam doesn't seal it's okay. You can just process it again. These are already sealing but if your jam doesn't seal you can always just the next day, wipe off the rim, put on a new lid, and just process it again. Easy, easy. Don't make it a big deal. Don't stress about canning. If these are just going to sit here on my counter and relax and seal, have a good night. And tomorrow, I will take the rings off and give everybody a good wash and label them and put them in my pantry. I gotta ask a question today about, you know, would you eat jam from 2021? Absolutely. <laughs> um, for things like jam or pickles, I'd probably even, well, you know, truth of the matter is I'd probably wouldn't worry about it as long as the lid is sealed. Um, because of the sugar content or the acid content, just don't worry about it. But in general, we're on a three year rotation on our pantry. Well, I hope you found this helpful. Hope you enjoyed our video. Um, check out the link in the description below where you can find my canner and the tools that I use. Just try. Don't be afraid to try. Anyways, we'll see you in the next video.